Welcome into the Steelers Talk Mailbag this week. It's my favorite segment of the week, guys, because I get to talk to you guys directly, that two-way conversation, and I get to hear from you guys what you want me to talk about instead of me just guessing what you want me to talk about. So let's get into it, man. But before we do, make sure you click that subscribe button right now if you haven't already to join the most interactive Steelers YouTube community here on the platform. We have electric live shows every single week, three times a week. We have a Pirates one for Paul Skeen's day. We've got two Steelers Talk live shows every week. One of those, we have these, we film this mailbag where you guys get your voice on the show. Really do appreciate your support. So make sure you join the over 54,000 Yinzers already subscribed by clicking that subscribe button right now. With that, I'll pause and open it up for questions. This one's coming in from Ant Dollasheim. It says, where do you rank the Steelers in the entire AFC conference right now Depending on if they stay in the same, with the same roster, no trades or signings. So when it comes to the AFC, when it comes to overall roster, I would put them, let's just say this, I'll put them in the top five. I love this roster. I think that Russell Wilson is going to have a bounce back season. Look what Arthur Smith was able to do with Ryan Tannehill in Tennessee. Made him look like a top 10 quarterback. He made a Pro Bowl. Uh, he had 33 touchdowns his final season with Arthur Smith as his OC. Just imagine what he's going to do for Russell Wilson, man, with George Pickens and the running backs we got here. I think this is a top five roster in the AFC, and I think that they're going to be really competing uh, come playoff time this year. Then we got one from Donald Duck says, what time will it take to land Tyler Lockett? What will it take to land Tyler Lockett in a trade? He has unbelievable chemistry with Russell Wilson. And he does, man. Like when it, when it came to their connection, he was one of the big reasons why Russ was a legitimate MVP candidate there in Seattle for so many years because their connection was just so great. Um, and I would love to see him in a Steeler uniform. And I think if the Steelers end up trading for a receiver from Seattle, I do think it would be Lockett because he's older. Uh, I don't think Seattle is willing to trade DK Metcalf. But I think uh, the trade could look something like this, all right? You trade a fifth round pick next year and Calvin Austin the third in exchange for Tyler Lockett. That way, Seattle uh, you know, gets a pretty decent player in Calvin Austin who plays a similar role to Tyler Lockett, only he's younger and cheaper. So I feel like this is something that might benefit both sides. But let me know. What do you guys think? Down there in the comments section, would you accept this trade if you were the Pittsburgh Steelers? Type A for accept or D for decline. This is going to be the pinned comment on today's show. And whenever YouTube throws you an ad break here, it should be in just a second. Uh, go down there in the comments section, find that pinned comment, and answer today's question. Then we go on from my man Dominic says, is this Steel Najee's last year with us and do Warren and Najee maybe both get over 1,000 yards rushing this year with Arthur Smith's offense? I would say both of them getting 1,000 is a stretch. I don't think they're going to be running it that much. I think they're going to run it a lot, uh, but I don't think both of them will get over 1,000. I think that, you know, best case scenario here, uh, they both have really good seasons, but it sounds like the Steelers really like Jalen Warren. It really does. It sounds like they really like Jalen Warren, and they're going to let Najee go after this year. Uh, it's going to depend who plays better. If Najee plays better than Warren, he will get the contract next offseason. It sounds like that they're going to kind of have a two-dog, one-bone kind of situation here where they're going to say, may the best man win. Then we got one from new Gold Club member Lil Slush. says, do you guys have any worries about the offensive line heading into this season? The one, the one concern I would say I do have is that it's young. You know, you do expect Fautano to come in and play eventually this season. Zach Frazier is expected to start week one. Um, who knows, Mason McCormick could be coming in there at some point. It's still a very young offensive line. Broderick Jones is only in his second year. Um, they haven't played together all that much. So you're going to have to build that chemistry. And, you know, the offensive line is very, very important in this Arthur Smith system. So uh, that offensive line, it's young. It's, uh, they haven't played a lot together. So they're going to have to really gel quickly. If they're able to do it, this team's going to be awesome. If they can't do it, it's going to be uh, frustrating, to say the least, here this season. Now, before we get to the rest of the questions today, make sure you click that subscribe button because we got daily Steelers videos for free here on YouTube. Breaking news coverage every time the Steelers make a move. If they trade for Brandon Ayuk, if they sign Michael Thomas, if they make some other kind of big move, we're going to have breaking news coverage for you guys, whether it's on my day off or I'm on vacation, whatever the case may be. It doesn't matter. I'm getting the video out to you guys. We have weekly live shows, three of them every week whenever Paul Skeens pitches, and then Wednesdays and Fridays at 4.30 p.m. Eastern for Steelers Talk Live. It's all 100% free. Uh, so if you want to join the largest Steelers Talk channel here on YouTube, make sure you click that subscribe button right now. Let me go on from Doomify. My man says, any information on Brandon Ayuk? Nothing new. 
uh, pretty much since he went on, I believe it was TikTok or Instagram Live or whatever it was, and he said, they don't want me anymore, and referring to the 49ers, of course. So uh, I guess we'll see what happens. I think that the Niners are open to trading him for the right price. Only question is, will the Steelers pay up? Then we got one from Terry Bradshaw here. He says, how upset would you be if the Steelers don't add another big-name wide receiver before training camp? Um, I would like them to. I'm not, I wouldn't say I'd be super upset because Pat Fryermuth has been awesome. I think he could be a legit number two receiving weapon for this team. Uh, so you would have George Pickens as your number one, Pat Fryermuth as your number two, Roman Wilson as your number three, and then like a bunch of guys that could be your number four, uh, like Calvin Austin the third, Quez Watkins, Scotty Miller, Van Jefferson. One of those guys is going to slot in there. So uh, I would like them to add another guy to kind of solidify this group, uh, but you never really know what's going to happen. Now, let's say you guys, let me know down there in the comments section, how upset would you be if Pittsburgh doesn't add another wide receiver this offseason? Put it on a scale of one, meaning I'm not uh, concerned about it at all, I'm not upset, to 10 being I'm so upset, how the hell could they <laughs> you know, make this kind of mistake? Let me know down there in the comments section how upset you would be if they stick with their current receiver room. Then we got one from Cynthia Edwards. Hey, Cynthia, says, do you think that JPJ – could be an all-pro this year? Yes, absolutely. He's got long arms. He's physical. Apparently, he's coming back even better this year than he was last year, and he was locked down last year. So love me some JPJ. Can't wait to see him in the Steelers' defense this year, and I wouldn't be shocked at all if he ends up being an all-pro this year. Then we got one from Christian Andujar. Says a lot of people are sleeping on the Steelers. I keep seeing people saying we're going 7 or in 10 or 9 and 8. I'm low-key starting to think we are the underdogs. Thoughts on that? I mean, the, I think that the big culprit here is that people don't believe in Russell Wilson. People saw Russell Wilson and the lack of success the Broncos had the last two years, and they blame it all on Russ, and they think that he can't win in this league anymore. And I look at Russell Wilson, and I look at the situation that Ryan Tannehill was in. When he went from the Dolphins to the Titans, everybody thought his career was over. He goes to Arthur Smith's offense, and he immediately becomes a pro bowler, goes to an AFC championship, throws 33 touchdowns the next year. Okay, so this is something that I'm definitely excited to see. Can Arthur Smith work his magic again on Russell Wilson? And because I think Russ fits in this offense really well, I think he's going to do that. And if that happens, this Pittsburgh Steeler team could win 12 or 13 games. Then we got one from Happy Gilmore, who says, who is more likely to win a title this year, Steelers or Pirates? Philipponi thinks it's Pirates. So I saw this. Philipponi said because the Pirates have their three young pitchers that they have to go all in on a World Series now and that they have a better chance in the Steelers this year. I completely disagree with this. Russell Wilson, if he has the kind of bounce-back season that I'm expecting him to have, uh, he's got playoff experience, uh, two Super Bowl appearances, uh, one of the best playoff quarterbacks in the history of the game statistically. I think that the Steelers, if Russell Wilson hits, is going to be right up there at the best teams in the league, and they could absolutely win a World Series or win a Super Bowl, whereas the Pirates, I still think, are probably at least a couple years away from truly competing for a title. Now, who's more likely to win in 2024? Type Steelers, if you think the Steelers are, or type Pirates, if you think the Pirates can win it all in Paul Skeens' first year as a Pirate. Speaking of Paul Skeens here, you can join us tomorrow, Sunday. Paul Skeens Watch Party, me and Jack Lauderay, we're going to be going live at 1 p.m. Eastern time. We're going to try to make it 10 straight live streams at least $1,000 in donations. You guys have been phenomenal over the last month or so. We're going to try to make it double digits tomorrow. And to commemorate the event, we're going to be giving away a Paul Skeens jersey, okay? So for our Paul Skeens jersey raffle, make sure you show up Sunday, 1 p.m. Eastern time, and come watch some Pirates baseball with us. All right, make sure you click that subscribe button if you haven't already. Really do appreciate all of your guys' support. And until next time, here we go, Steelers.